Hello, my name is Juliette Birch, and I am a programmer with uh, in the short films programs for Film Fest DC. And I'm very pleased to have with us uh, today Jonathan Schwenk, whose film is Zoan, and this appeared in this year's Sundance Film Festival. Congratulations for that. Um, Jonathan is based in Berlin, but coming to us from France, uh, from a very interesting environment in France. Um, Jonathan, welcome. And just as a word, um, we may be joined by another filmmaker who is was having a little trouble getting on the call. So uh, Mincho Limbu, so, um, so we'll stand by for Mincho and hope that he can join us. So Jonathan, welcome. Thanks for making the time to be with us. Um, and tell us, first of all, a little bit about the environment where you are right now. First of all, thanks for having me. I'm super happy to be here and uh, that we made this possible. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, calling in from France, from Fontevraud, which is uh, where is um, uh, a monastery. And uh, there I am taking part in a residency for artists um, specializing in animation. And uh, we, yeah, so I'm, I'm here with a couple of people who work um, as animators, especially, and, and we are writing scripts for our new films uh, or developing them, like we are into storyboarding, script writing, like, yeah, these, this part of filmmaking. Fantastic. Yeah. What a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it's really great and long, like for, for one month. It's really great to have this opportunity for such a long time and to really dive in and focus, like without so much like disturbance from, I don't know, regular life. Yeah, it's really uh, great. Yeah. Well, Zoan is an amazing uh, little film. You, you pack a lot into four minutes. <laughs> And uh, um, and I think Mincha will be joining us in a few minutes, so we'll stand by for yeah. him. But in the meantime, um, can you tell us um, uh, tell us a little bit about well, what the name of the film means first of all, mm -hmm. and what that means to you? So on uh, comes from Old Greek, and it uh, means beast or animal, and yeah, that's what what I show or try to observe with this film, like especially specifically two species of beasts. Um, and yeah, these two species are like, I would say quite different. There's uh, the species, I, I guess that people will have watched this, uh, the film yes. already, right? Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, I, I won't spoil anything. <laughs> um, so, so there are these, uh, the, the axolotls, these, um, the small shimmering animals that are, yeah, very like modest. They are happy with what they have. They don't need so much. Um, they basically mostly they have themselves like as a group and um, yeah they I think they have a different approach than the these other let's call them biped uh, bipeds uh, like more human like creatures that are a bit more yeah pushy they they are really curious they want to experience more from life they they want more from life and yeah i guess they are a bit probably more like humans um and yeah these are two like things uh, or two approaches to life that i i think are both um yeah many many of us including me we, we probably want both uh, from life in a way yeah. interesting and so for one thing the axolotls are a real creature and um, mm -hmm. and amazingly, you know, I, I looked up axolotls. I had never heard of them, but they really do look exactly like the creatures you created in the film. Um, you know, they have this natural smile. To, they look like they're smiling. And yeah. um, 
yeah, so uh, that was interesting. And then you're juxtaposed with this purely fabricated creature. Um, but I wonder if they um, don't have more in common than, you know, this is interesting, this idea that one is more human like the bipeds um, and they have uh, other desires. The axolotls are just completely content in their moment of being. Um, and uh, yet seems to me like maybe what this, this, these woodland bipeds yearn for is the state of the axolotls, this complete contentment with the moment. What would you say about that? I agree. This is uh, maybe because we naturally um, take or like see ourselves in the bipeds. Um, maybe that's why. I, I mean, I personally, I, for, for myself, I can say I, I would like to be more like the axolotls a lot, yeah. um, just to, to need less from life <laughs> um, and to be, how did you say, content or like happy uh, anyways. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if this answers your question in any way now, but um, yeah. Hmm. Does it? <laughs> Sorry, I lost the track a bit. Uh... Well, I, um, you know, I really feel like the themes that I'm seeing here are um, this uh, lack of fear and the lack of need to control things. And so I guess we're looking at these two creatures and, you know, in the context of that, and um, you also have these other little cre woodland creatures, a, a little mm. worm. And, uh, you know, you have three other little creatures who are oh, an owl. And they are like getting out of the way. They're, they're in danger. <laughs> mm. They're like fearful of this bacchanalia that's going on. And, um, and yet then your main characters are just being. Um, I mean, I love like what was really profound to me is that the axolotls, they don't mind being eaten. Like they don't, they're totally okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, and, maybe also because they experience this for the first time. So maybe they have no, simply no clue that they're about yes. to be eaten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> they are super naive in a way, uh, I guess. These other creatures, I think they are also like, Kind of disturbed i saw them a bit like these grumpy neighbors who are like <laughs> like looking out of the window and like oh what's going on there there's some noise something's going on what i what i don't know so they are um i, I wanted to have them more like a more distant um perspective so that they would kind of comment on the the, the happenings um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought that all these things would happen for the first time in that forest. Mm -hmm. So I thought that neither the, the, the axolotls would know that they were about to be eaten, nor that the, these other creatures knew what, what would happen. I, I think no. So also they don't the, know the, the, there's the... something to fear. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also no yeah. one knew that they were about to fly. Um, y yes. To, but but then they embrace this new experience, you know, like the first creature, his leg sort of lifts up and he, he comes up and goes down and he immediately wants that experience again. And yes. then everybody gets into the act. Yeah. And then I wonder if you could talk about the moment in which they rise above the forest. Mm -hmm. I think that is, comes close to um, the feeling that uh, there was the original feeling of, for me when, when I made the film. Um, I wanted to catch this moment of like, um, yeah, like, a, no, okay, I have to start again. I, maybe um, uh, I should say that the film that I made before was super dark, dystopic, very heavy. 
and then I definitely needed something lighter, a um, bit more like uplifting. And yeah, that's uh, th then I, I, I thought yeah, I tried to, to catch a moment of pure uh, bliss or um, how, do you, how do you say um, happiness? No, it's not. Ah, it's lacking a word. Um, when you are really like, it was like ecstasy. In, and enjoyment yeah, yeah. yeah something like this yeah, yeah. and um also there again my, my my thought was that they see the sunlight or maybe the light the direct sunlight for the first time in their life um and also also in the music this was something we really tried to to um uh embrace uh, to to A create very... this um this very moment now. Yeah. yeah, I'm very interested in the music actually. Um, I come from a family of musicians and um, uh, I was really interested in like, the soundtrack. It, it appears to all be vocal, like mm -hmm. singing. And then also, of course, you have the, the speaking or the vocalization of the creatures and could you talk more about that? I thought that was simply amazing. Um, I was uh, very lucky that um, David Kamp uh, joined the, the project. He um, is already like quite experienced as like many, many, uh, he worked on many, many films um, with uh, specifically animators and so yeah, I asked him if he'd be up to, to do the music and he agreed and uh, he ended up also doing the sound uh, part in the end. Um, yeah, we, we discussed uh, uh, a lot this, this journey that the sound does um, as an equivalent to the, to the image. Does it make equivalent? Does it make sense? Like a, yes. we, we try to, to tell the same Kind of journey that um, that the image does. I mean, the image image goes from super dark, super um, close to to the ground, to um, to like wide angle uh, panorama, uh, wide shots, uh, super bright light. Also, ah, yeah, from monochromatic to um, colorful. Right. Um, so yeah, and the sound does kind of the same. It starts like. Um, if you happen to, to see it in a, in a cinema, it, it starts from the center speaker uh, and, and then later it opens up. Um, and in the end, and at the scene where, where they rise up, uh, it comes from all sides and it's like really immersive and uh, much, much louder than in the beginning. It starts super low. And yeah, so we tried to, to make this, um, as extreme as possible without, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Well, thank Point. you. <laughs> I'm seeing that uh, Mincho is ready to join us and we're so glad that he could make it. So we'd like to bring him on now and introduce him. Mincho? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. So glad that Hi. you could join us. <laughs> well, that's quite a mishap. I thought you were supposed to start at nine. Oh, I, I'm. Um, I'm very yeah. sorry if there was some time uh, confusion, yeah. but we're here, and yeah. um, we're really glad that you're with us. Uh, Mincho is joining us from Kathmandu, so quite a time difference. Um, and, and again, uh, Mincha, we're here with Jonathan Schwenk. He Hi, is Jonathan. joining us from France. Hello, yes, so Jonathan's film is, is Zoan, as you know, and Mincha's film is Jun Junko. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were just talking to uh, Jonathan about uh, the sound element in his film, fascinating. Um, and, um, and we were talking about themes of, um, kind of 
fear and control and liberation in both of these films. So I thought we'd start with just kind of going deep in. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you um, about these elements, these themes in your film. Um, you know, so what I see is Junko, the main character here is, she's controlled by her perceived need to receive this phone call. Um, yeah. And ultimately, she accepts that she can't control this. And really, she recasts her entire vision of herself as a woman. And I'm wondering if you could just speak to that. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I think that that was kind of supposed to be the uh, main element of the film. It's a, a kind of a village woman uh, disco discovering herself on what is what it means to be a female in rural Nepal. I mean, I think uh, that subject was kind of given to me by my uh, film teacher in my film school. And then I kind of developed it uh, uh, mostly. Uh, Junko is very expressive of who I am as a person. I think that's what my uh, uh, culture has shaped me into it. I, I, I mean, my mom herself is a female activist and then she kind of, has been uh, very important to me on this film as well. I think uh, this film is a great example of my relationship with my mom. And I think uh, well, that was exactly what I, what I was trying to do. I think uh, there was this story that uh, my film teacher handed to me with, in which the, uh, in, in real life, the character that inspired Junkook uh, came into a conclusion of uh, having suicide. And then the, the, so that conclusion didn't really stuck with me. I mean, I, mean, I was not very satisfied with uh, the conclusion. And then I kind of wanted to make it an alternate ending with this film. Yeah, okay. so and you had read an, an article in which a woman, a newlywed woman, what, is this correct? Can I summarize? Yeah. Um, yeah. A newlywed woman uh, was left by her husband with her mother while uh -huh. he went to look for work in India, really the same yeah. setup as your film. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he never contacted her for yeah. you know, a, a very long time and she commits suicide over it. Yeah, really exactly. tragic story. Yeah. So, yeah. but then in your film, you, you've taken this to a different place. And yeah. um, I, I wonder if you could talk about the mother character a little bit um, and about, you know, they've got these parallel stories and she's, she's a very strong woman. Yeah, uh, that character was, wasn't in real life. I think I added that uh, in my fictional world. I think, I, and that character uh, had to be there because I wanted the, the Junko to feel that there, there are women like her that's, that exists in the society, but then uh, kind of wanted to give Junko a perspective on what uh, what she needs to do other than commit suicide. I think and mother uh, the mother character was extremely uh, needed for me as a writer. And then uh, it kind of also uh, that mother character is basically everything that my mother is to me. I think see uh, my mom herself is a very strong woman, and and I think that was exactly what I tried to implement on my writing as well. So. Uh, that, that was mo mostly a personal thoughts in my film, yeah. It was, yeah, really, it was really just perfect, um, that balance yeah. of the parallel stories there. Um, let, let's go back to Yonatan for a moment. Um, uh, we had an interesting conversation, Mincho, before you came in about um, kind of some of these themes in his film as well, which are much more subtle and complex in a way. They're about these, um, these uh, unusual woodland creatures and their own relationships to, um, to uh, uh, fear, control, liberation, uh, uh, some of these same elements that come up in your film. Um, Jonathan, I would, and, uh, I'd love to talk to you about uh, the animation techniques and, and especially the use of puppetry, which I think was new for you in this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, totally new for me. Um, as for the team as well, um, I was a bit, sometimes a bit frustrated of um, the amount of, um, uh, how do you say, it? like uh, con the, the, the possibility to control everything in animation. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I was I, I just missed those moments where when things would just happen by coincidence. And so it was my approach to bring in some of these moments again. And I have to say I totally failed <laughs> because <laughs> we, we just ended up to, to control these uh, puppets uh, like quite exact again. Uh, we treated them like, uh, I mean, that there were definitely some things also just happening because uh, we had these ideas or these ideas like came literally out of the, the of the puppeteers who just played around with the with the characters but um it was more or less and exactly what what we what we did what we had already in the storyboard and in the animatic so i will backtrack just a minute so the the woodland bipeds as i'm calling them they are puppets but but the axolotls are plasticine right they're not puppets correct so, yeah so this is all about controlling the movements of the woodland bipeds. And this yes. was like, how many, I mean, there are multiple puppeteers for each biped. How many people were working on each puppet? Uh, it depends a bit of the complexity of each, uh, of each shot. Um, we had some shots where, for example, those two um, creatures would like bump their bellies uh, to each other's. Uh, other uh, then we needed like three uh, puppeteers per character so six people ended up being in like super close to each other um, moving these puppets and um, yeah so it's um, th this was one of the more complex shots but there were others that were super easy with one one or two uh, people and how was it to integrate the the, the different animation styles yeah, this is something I really like to do, to um, combine different uh, animation techniques, if, especially if they are uh, handmade. So what I, I think what I love the most is stop motion, yeah, mostly because I really like the, um, yeah, to, to work with my hands and to have like a real thing in front of me and not just a screen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I, I, I really enjoy this process to melt the, the different layers together in the compositing and yeah, to, to also make the, the, the borders disappear, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, it really does beautifully done. Um, it was amazingly integrated, you know, I mean, I, I saw a little behind the scenes uh, video and we just was profoundly impressed with how how many elements you're integrating together. Um, let, let's go back to Mincho for a moment. Mincho, can you tell us about um, the actresses and also about the location where you were filming? Oh, you're, uh, we need to get you off mute. Looks like we might be having an audio problem. Ah, here you are. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, the, this was my graduation project. Uh, I don't know yes. if you guys knew that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys give me one minute? <laughs> Maybe. So sorry. So sorry, that was my French playing up on me. So sorry. <laughs> this is the Zoom world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, since since this was my graduation project, I think uh, I had to cast actors from my own college, uh, and uh, and the lead character that played Junko is my classmate. She was from the acting uh, facility, and then uh, I didn't have much choice on the casting. But then uh, I, I kind of had worked with the actor before. I think uh, she worked with me in my dialogue project. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of wa was in a very familiar space with her and was very comfortable working with her for this character. I think that uh, since uh, since I was already told by my college that I had to cast an actor from my college, I think she kind of was on the back of my mind when I was writing the character as well. And then, but for the mother character, I had to look as elsewhere because uh, we didn't have any aged characters on my college uh, everyone uh, were of my same age and then i had to look for theater artists 
the the woman that played the mo- mom was is a theater artist actually she is a very known theater uh, artist in nepal and then uh the process with her was very fun cuz like uh, i was a very enthusiastic new film school graduate and then i kind of had this budget as well to make a film and then i approached her and then uh, it was a very mixed reaction fr- from her as well cuz like uh, i'm i'm not very articulate uh, i'm not very vocally articulate and then I, before i sent her the script i kind of met with her before and then i wasn't very able to express my thought to her properly and then she was kind of uh, hesitant at the way first meet but then i sent her the script and she kind of got to know what i uh, wanted to do with the script and what i was expecting from uh, from her character and then uh, we didn't had a lot of workshop actually i think uh, the only workshop that i had to do was on set cuz like uh, uh, i was aiding on all the uh, other projects as well and then when my project came up uh, i just went on the location like uh, on coming to your second question about the location i think Uh, my script was very uh, my script kind of gave me all the map work for the location that i had to look out i think th- that was very clear for me on my writing perspective as well because uh, i needed a house that was supposed to be in the middle of a very wide field and then and, and then uh, that that was kind of what i was looking for in my location scouting as well and then i kind of went to the location scouting with two of my ad's and then we kind of it was on i think the second day that i found the perfect match on the location and then uh, when i found the location that was it i, I think everything uh, everything that i wrote kind of came into my ma- mind and then uh, like i the next thing i knew was like i was in short design and then i moved ahead with the storyboards so there uh, i think that that kind of was the process with yeah. actors and the location and what part of nepal is this filmed in uh, uh it's it's called tanahu and then it's uh kind of not in the hilly region but uh, on the plains of nepal is like cuz like nepal is mostly divided into three parts the himalayan the hilly and the tarai the 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 tarai is supposed to be the plains uh, this was on the this was on the plains okay all right uh, yeah. and and yonatan um was uh was your previous film your graduation project or was this film your graduation project Awesome. Did you have a recent graduation project as well? Uh, Tuan is my graduation project. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you want to talk about that at all? Is a um, you know, as well, I can I can say that where I studied, for example, it was uh, the University of Art and Design in Offenbach. It's a small art school. It, not small but it's an art school not a film not a specific film school and um but i also did studies in uh, in, uh, in in another art school in kassel also in germany and they have an animation class so i um i had a bit both like uh, more the live action film part in uh, the first uh, yeah in my main uh, university and the um animation part um in the other there's a, a moment in each of your films where um your uh characters shed a tear and i thought it would be interesting to talk about that um because i think that they are sort of critical moments in both films um and mincho in your film it's when um a particular song comes on the radio and junko is listening to that song could you talk about that uh uh yeah i mean uh, that particular shot that you're talking about about um, uh junko shedding a tear wasn't scripted actually I, and that particular shot that ended up on the final cut wasn't the shot that i actually shot it was supposed to be a close up and then uh, it was static but then it was my editor who kind of persuaded me to uh, try things on the editing room and then uh, it was on one of those days where he kind of just zoomed in and then like pan the shot and then I, I which i thought was brilliant and then i just said okay this is it but uh, on on particularly on the scripting part i think i kind of wanted uh, junko to have a moment in the middle of the film where uh, where she kind of uh has enough i think uh, where it's where it's supposed to be a midpoint for her but then i i also wanted to uh, it to be very subtle and then i just couldn't come with it 
and it was my act, uh, the mother character that actually suggested me that she, uh, it would be great if, you, if she just said Satya while listening to this song. She kind of thought that was very poetic and then she kind of went with the locations as well. Can so you it was my say mother. something about this song? Uh, oh like, yeah, uh, the, the, the radio part was kind of a very personal touch as well because like uh, I grew up with my, uh, I grew up listening to my father's radio on the back of the car ahead uh, a lot. I mean, and then that, that song kind of uh, was a song that I kind of selected for when I was in the editing room. And then that uh, the artist uh, th that sang the song is called Aruna Lama. And uh, her name is Aruna Lama and she's a very well-known uh, artist in Nepal. I mean, her, all of her songs are very classic. Yeah. And then uh, uh, it, it was kind of my homage, as, as uh, like I said before, Junko was kind of my exploration about my relationship with my mother. But then this was kind of a touch that I wanted to keep. Like, I, don't, I didn't want to separate my father as well. So uh, as I was uh, scripting it, I just thought that this element would be, I think that would, I kind of thought that that was exa exactly what Junko would do at that moment, because like, uh, she would listen to a song, right? Because like that's all we are, I, I did, and then I just pu put it in the song, and then those lyrics kind of match the song as well. But my film yeah, feature was against it, like yeah, yeah. my film so feature was kind of against yeah. it. Yeah, so you're honoring your father and your mother both in this film. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan, so it, uh, I feel like the one of the woodland bipeds. There's a moment when. Um, it, it sheds a tear. And can you talk about that moment in your film? Yeah, well, I think it's more a tear of joy mm -hmm. than, uh, than a tear of sadness, I guess. So yeah, it's a bit this moment that we, we, we were talking about before, um, that it's like the, the moment of, of pure, pure happiness. Um, yeah, I, I think this is the the image that that I drew first, kind of. Um, um, yeah, so I I think this is this moment for me is more important than 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 what happens after. Uh, it's it doesn't really matter because this is their goal, kind of like. Yes. After this, maybe maybe that's all they they ever needed. So. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, there there doesn't seem to be any any upset about disappearing, about. <laughs> and then oh. I I also notice um, in your film when they so the creature sheds the tear as they see the light and they are together and it's this it seems like a moment of completeness, and you know and just overwhelm of beauty, and then. Then they disappear. They, um, I, you know, I don't know, explode, whatever. And there's these little lights, and then there's a shadow of little lights. Um, and I'm curious about that. I thought that was really interesting. There was this um, like second wave of little lights, and like an I was echo. wondering how you chose to make that decision. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was important that this moment of of happiness um, happens. Um, not for individual to, individuals only, but that it happens um, as a like a mutual experience. They 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 do this together as a family or a tribe or no, I don't know what's like a, a bunch of of um, of creatures. And when when we see these. Um, the, the the things you you were talking about uh, for me they are um, the same creatures or the the same species of creatures who experience probably like in the same thing um, a bit more far away like like they 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 do this together they did this together without knowing um, so I I thought. I try to to scale it up to a bigger event, kind of. Um, and it's as if so. Then people on the ground can see this beautiful thing in the sky. <laughs> also, mm -hmm. there's a sort of other. I mean, I'm imagining this wave of beauty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was wondering um, if the axolotls down there would also like look up and the, the yeah, remaining ones yes, and observe. Yes. You know, so. Right, exactly. Yeah, what do they make of that? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, so what, uh, Mincho, are you engaged in a next project? Uh, yes, I am currently writing my uh, second short film. And then I'm also working with Nabin, like you, like like you know. Uh, you had mentioned to me that you um, had recently assisted um, on a film with Nabin Suba, um, yeah. which sounds pretty exciting. Nabin Suba is a very uh, well-known um, Nepali filmmaker, and I we we had talked previously. I had the honor of meeting him a few years ago when he showed his film. Um, uh suddenly the name is escaping me Kathmandu uh goodbye Kathmandu, goodbye, Kathmandu. Yeah. yeah um and uh and I'm I'm wondering if you could talk about like what that experience was like for you for, for a moment um sounds like it was really uh really exciting and and his film uh, spoken on, on an indigenous group of people in in uh eastern in, Nepal yeah yeah uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, Navin Subha is like uh, a, a kind of an idol to me in terms of Nepali filmmaking. I mean, he, he kind of laid the foundation for us. And then I, well, he's, uh, I met him after I graduated film school and then I kind of approached him so I can work on his project. And then I kind of got into it as a second AD. But then as uh, we were supposed to shoot before COVID happened and then, uh, after lockdown, everything changed, uh, and then we had to shift our pre-production virtually. And then I kind of got promoted uh, into the post of unit production manager. So that's what I handled in in his film. And, and I mean, Naveen kind of is very detail oriented. So I think he kind of got the best of everyone who worked on that film. And then especially for this project, because this was shot on a very rural uh, village of Nepal where there was no access of road, and then the the first road uh, has to come on this film. So the, the, we kind of had to find a village where, where there was no road. And then we kind of had to build a road on there. So, so it kind of seemed so like this was the first get in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then it was almost five months in rural Nepal, no internet connection. And then uh, the electricity was only when the generator was uh, up. And then it was almost 70 to eight, 75 days that, we sh uh, that the camera opened. And then we kind of had the DP from US. I mean, uh, he was a, he, it was his first time film as well. So we kind of, and all the producers are from all, over, all around the world. We have investment from Hong Kong. Uh, we have investment from UK, US, everywhere. So it was kind of a global uh, support to Nabin Subba. So kind of, so like, he, like you said, he's an independent filmmaker and he likes to work this way. So it was kind of hectic, but it also got the best out of me and then I'm all extremely grateful that I got the opportunity so early in my career to work as a unit production manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's very, very exciting. Thank you for telling us about it. And and yeah. Jonathan, what's um what's on the docket for you? You are in this great place right now where you're developing some ideas. And do you have a next project in the works? Yes, uh, I'm writing a new script. Um, I'm in this state right now in this um, um, episode right now where it's super difficult to talk about uh, the the story because like you know you develop something and one day it's you think it's like it works well and you have the characters and everything like um, feels um, three-dimensional in a way and then the next day it might be all like well but it doesn't work so it's like there's so much ups and downs in this development phase that it's uh, still really really difficult for me to yeah. to uh, give something fluid. away but i mean i guess again probably i will have some creatures uh, clashing into each other in some way and uh, or like yeah some and and will some of them be pear shaped like our woodland bipeds <laughs> uh, probably not this time i don't know okay. I, I mean i would I also really like to do your film stock you had the pear-shaped 
uh, yes, five kids yeah. too. So I didn't know yeah, if that was a similar. special attachment. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, this is also um, like a design that is also quite related to uh, the films of Merlin Flügel, who is my co-writer. Um, and yeah, we, we develop uh, both scripts together. So it's like um, this, um, how do you say, uh, co -pro no. our, uh, we, we do this together. So our, our creatures sometimes also look a bit similar. And but very interesting your note that um it's another film about uh creatures clashing because because that seems to be a theme for you that this really brings up a yeah. lot of interesting possibilities well maybe yeah <laughs> we'll see <laughs> yes. so no. <laughs> well, we can't wait to hear um about to see it and um, I think we're just about out of time. Um, so I want to thank you both, Jonathan Schwenk and Mincho Limbu, uh, especially Mincho, overcoming a little, little obstacle to get here. Um, thank you so much for being with us. And um, to our Film Fest DC audience, thank you for listening and goodbye. <laughs>